All right, YouTube, cheers, 2023. It's another good year. Hopefully you, uh, your new year started off well. Thank you for joining me in this video. This is an intro video to probably a couple video series of actually making a wool pullover called an anorak, sort of, right? If you go out online and you go to purchase one, you'll find that they're anywhere from $200 to $400. I'm going to, as I go through the process of making an anorak, I'm going to take you through some of the things that kind of get me hung up and what process I use and what materials. And, you know, if it's your first time making anything, this is only my third time making anything out of, you know, meaning sewing. It's my, my, it'll be my third piece of clothing that I'm making from scratch. So the product that I use is a wool blanket some of you will use uh, surplus military blanket so if you're here you want to make an anorak or you want to see somebody make an anorak and then go buy one I don't know the first thing I made I took on a challenge and the reason why I did I've, I've mentioned in other videos is I went out online and I was watching you know bushcraft a camp and a lot of those guys were talking about the benefits of wool. Wool is a fiber, it doesn't smell, it's your self-cleaning, and it keeps you warm. It keeps you warm even when it gets wet, maintains 80% of its warmth. So it's a really great fiber. You know, if you get uh, sparks on it from the fire and it lands on your arm, you can just dust it off. It's not gonna burn a hole. Like your, your brand new Patagonia jacket the first time you get an ember on there and you're looking at the lining. <laughs> that really sucks but the natural fibers don't do that. So this is the first piece of clothing that I made. I made it double lined. Um, my wife is not happy with it just because it was unfortunately not a very high quality military blanket that I used. And that's okay. I learned a lot from making it. I actually lined it with an old wool overcoat. It's heavy. Um, it's not as warm as I thought it would be, although it is warm. And it's really because this wool blanket on top is a kind of a loose weave and without real loft in a garment it's not going to be as warm as you might hope so that was number one number two garment that I made starting to get a little better a little more like a traditional anorak I started to care about the design actually I like the design of both of these even though I made them though I do say my <laughs> if I do say my <laughs> do say so myself even for, easy for me to say oh my god anyway why make things yourself? You get to choose the material. You get to choose the design. And at the end of the day, it should fit you better than anything else that isn't custom tailored. So you think you go, you can go and buy something that fits you, and that's great. If you go and have something tailored to fit you, that's when the price goes up, right? When you buy 100% natural fibers, the price goes up. So that's really where it is. Like Learning how to make things in an inflationary environment is probably always going to be a good idea. And that's what I'm here to do for myself, to learn how to make things. And I do all kinds of stuff. I learn how to do carpentry. I learn how to do some basic plumbing and wiring and um, tiling and put in staircases like being a homeowner you can either pay somebody to do stuff or you can do it yourself and that's kind of the approach i'm taking to making garments i bought a couple of wool anoraks they turned out not to be wool i had I'd gotten a lead off of facebook mark uh, well facebook and i found out that facebook doesn't vet any of these advertisements so buyer beware when you're out there i actually got scammed on some sneakers too where i never got anything in return um but at the end of the day, you know, if it seems too good to be true, it probably is. And if the more of the circumstances of it you can control, probably the happier you're going to be with the outcome. Like, I'm, I'm very happy with both of those two pieces of clothing that I made, and they were for myself. This video series is about me making an anorak for my son. Now, my biggest challenge is the difference in size between the two of us. Now, I'm not I'm average size. I'm actually like 185, 190 pounds, 5'9" where my son is 6'1 and 270 pounds, which creates a whole other situation because he's so much bigger than me and so much bigger than average, it's hard for me to um, use myself as 
as a model for what I'm making. So I have taken measurements of him like a tailor, and I have had him do a couple of fittings, actually. So some of the things that disappointed me in the world here is things that are called wool and aren't. And that's a real problem, is we have so much deception in advertising and this, you know, really, uh, at the time, very nice camo hunter coat claimed to be wool, but it's not. It's 23% wool, and that's the shell. The lining is 100% polyester. So that's kind of a bummer, right? I mean, if they had this in actual wool, maybe it would have been $400, and then you can choose to pay $400, or you can accept buying a wool blend, right? And that's kind of where I'm at and why I'm really focused now on actually learning how to tailor my own clothes. And that's what this video is going to be about is a process of actually making an anorak from scratch. You're going to see the blanket. You're going to see me lay out the chalk marks of the pattern that I'm going to use and you're going to see me cut it. And then you're going to see me start to assemble it. I'm going to, you're going to see the sewing machines that I use. I actually went out and bought a couple of, I had a well, I had a Vintage Singer sewing machine gifted to me. The first two anoraks that I made myself, I made on a $100 Brother sewing machine. And we'll talk about why a vintage machine may make some sense, but you have to be a little mechanical, or you're going to have to buy one that's already been serviced or take it to be serviced, and that's fine. Um, but if you're only going to make one garment, you could, you could argue that it makes more sense to buy one. To go to Empire Woolen Mill online or Boreal um, anoraks and you just buy an anorak and so they do some level of tailoring which is great i would probably buy one from them myself if i didn't already have the desire to make it right when you get into how much it costs you like if, to make one thing it, it's it's sometimes less expensive to buy it because of the cost of all the materials uh you know at least the, the like certainly the sewing machine and, and any of the things you're going to need to do and the waste you're going to create because it's your first time doing something. But if you want to know how to consistently make something and you just decide like I am, I'm going to start A, making some of my own clothes and B, making sure everything that I own fits me. And that's the other benefit to learning how to make, you know, how to hem a garment, how to cut the fabric, how to join the fabric. You know, really start thinking about design, how these um, pieces of clothing are put together so you can make sure that everything you own fits and it looks good on you. This is kind of big right now. I have another one of these um, that actually fits me well. And it was funny. My cousin goes, hey, where'd you get that? And my wife is a flight attendant. She traveled to Spain. And this is a 100% cotton jacket. And I had the shirt and a jacket combo with the same corduroy bat, uh, jacket but and he goes and it fits <laughs> all right well you know seeing clothes that fit you well makes a difference and if you're more athletic or like me I'm, I, I lift weights and I'm not really thin so some of the things I'm like a big chest but I don't have a really big belly so sometimes the sizing doesn't fit me right and some clothes don't really look that good on me and that, now I have a choice to accept that pay a tailor to taken and alter all of my garments for me, or I can learn how to make them myself. And when you look at, so my wife bought me, uh, what did I do with it? My wife bought me this nice wool vest. I'm trying to spruce it up. Anybody who's ever seen Downton Abbey, you just see how in the past people used to dress really well, you know? They look good, even when they were chopping wood and stuff, because they didn't own that much, and everything they owned was higher quality. This Filson vest is like over, yes, you know, like $225, $240. You know, and who knows with inflation, this stuff is going to keep going up, but it's not a really complex piece of clothing. It's something that I can deconstruct in a way or reverse engineer and make them for myself. And if you think about once you own the machines and you know how to sew, it's really not going to be maybe more than $75 in my own time to custom tailor however, however many vests I want to own. I have one in 10 colors. Who cares? Right now, the vest I have matches this hat my wife bought me in Germany. 
And I'm wearing this because it's like my tailor's mode. I put on my German uh, wool hunter's hat and I get to town. So again, this is, I'm already well into the process of creating this wool pullover for my son. And I wanted to do a new intro video because some of the video I'm taking is with me doing the selfie hold, right? And I'm not always perfectly centered on what I'm doing and bear with me. Uh, you'll get to a certain point towards the end where now that I'm using a tripod, most of the shots are going to be like this where it'll make more sense. I'm probably not going to have anybody running the camera. <laughs> I'm not a high production. I think I have 22 subscribers. Um, although I do have one of my wool anorak videos with a thousand views. And hopefully this, because it's going to be an actual process for you, you're going to want to stay with me and you're going to want to go buy these things and you're going to use this really is a tutorial sort of because you're going to see the steps and then you can go okay I should probably be doing this now I need to have all of my thread you know I need to have the wool uh, blanket picked out and probably buy a decent one you can get a decent wool blanket for 40 bucks maybe don't go to Pendleton Woolen Mills and buy a $250 wool blanket you mean you're almost there to buying a, a wool pullover from Empire Woolen Mill <laughs> so you know, at that point, it's right, you know, you, you get to choose the quality of the materials, but it, but you can go on Etsy and just buy wool. You don't need to buy a wool blanket. You can, you can buy wool by the yard if you want to do it that way. So there's more than one way to do it. Um, I have bought lining for the jacket, uh, for the anorak on Etsy. Um, some of it's a little too sheer. Um, you'll see I, I did go and I use... Um, Goodwill as a way to just harvest wool very inexpensively. You can get, and uh, you'll see, I, I actually cannibalizing a pair of wool suit pants and using them as a lining for, you know, I can take it back and run it through the wash. And now I have a nice piece of wool to use for very inexpensive. So this is the process. This is the beginning. I'm going to, the next part is going to be spliced into me, like right in there starting to go through the process of making the anorak, the layout, the steps, the attachment of the different materials, right, the, the panels and, and how, how I assemble them and what time. Right now, as it stands, the hood is made, it's attached to the back, the back and the front are both cut out, the, the kangaroo pouch is on, the waist cinch is laid out and into the jacket, I actually had my son come in for a fitting and I ended up having to make it wider by a good four inches because he's 275 pounds. He's got like a 52 inch chest and 24 inch arms. So I could, I, my, my body, I, doesn't, I, I can't use myself as a, a model for it. So that's where I'm at. But you're going to go through the process of just starting with the blanket and laying it out and, and some of the thoughts and materials. I'll show you my toolbox. I'll show you my sewing machines. So stay with me. Hopefully you're going to enjoy it. Um, you know, there's a car show I like is Coffee Walk. Well, this is, you know, get yourself a nice bottle of Cabernet. Pour yourself a glass or a nice beer, whatever you use when you're um, doing some layout and you're chilling out and you're being quiet and you're crafting and you're doing things. And just enjoy the process. It's currently the end of January. I started because he's like, how long does it take? I started January 2nd, but it's not every day. And some days I spent more time. Some week I'll go without doing anything. Or I'll be doing something where the only thing I'm contributing to doing is buying buttons, right? So, or pulling things apart. Like I stopped in between to hem a couple of shirts. And like I said, that's going to be part of the deal is you, if you choose to, and make it so every piece of clothing you have fits you perfectly. There's a definite plus side. So grab your cap or your beer, whatever it is, and uh, let's get into it. So I'll go over some of the tools that you're going to need. And as I go through it, I'll start working into actually, you know, how you hold the wool together so you can sew it, setting up the pattern. Some of the things I'll do with putting in like a waist level a uh, piece of paracord that you can use as a cinch to tighten it down. I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with the collar yet. 
I may do something like this. This was an accident. I cut I cut the wool incorrectly, and I end up having to piece another another section, and it end up looking kind of cool. So sometimes you make a mistake, and it ends up being pretty cool. But I will start with the hood, and something that's going to be almost like you know they make a hood and shoulder thing that you could throw over your body. It's kind of going to be like that, but it's going to be attached to the rest of the vest. So essentially, you make a vest. You add arms and you add the hood. So it's not really that complicated. But some of the things you'll need, I have a, this is a fishing box. It's a sewing kit. Bought some of these um, different needles. Nice little storage thing for the needles. I bought some snaps. And I have some of the tools for the snaps. So the, getting set up, depending on how you're going to do it. If you're going to do a zipper or snaps or toggles, you're going to need to have an idea of how you're going to close up any of the areas on the garment that you want to. In this case, I found these nice buttons on Amazon. I bought them and then I did a sort of serviceable job of the buttonholes. But that's, you know, it was the first buttonholes I've ever done and I was trying and uh, I did what I could. So, in here, I went to Michael's during a sale and I bought a bunch of thread. And I bought a bunch of thread in the colors I'm probably going to use. I also have some other buttons that I put on a different jacket that I have. I bought different kinds of, of hand sewing needles. I have a couple different sewing machines. I have more of these buttons that I can use. So as you start to accumulate stuff, the next thing you make will, will be less expensive than the first. But you know, once you have all this thread and stuff, then you're kind of in business. But you're going to need thread. I bought some hook and loop in case I need to use that somewhere. Uh, I may use that as part of closure for uh, the sleeve. So if you look at the sleeve on this, this uh, pullover, this has like a hook and loop style. So here you have the hook and loop. It's got a elastic cinch on there. And the, like, so this one that I made, <laughs> The end of the sleeve is just straight. So if you're really out in the cold and you're doing something, maybe you're shoveling your car even, if you don't have something to close the end of the sleeve, you could get you know, snow back up into your coat. So that's on this one that I make, I am going to do some kind of a closure for the sleeve. Um, these ones are cool because you, you, you make the... Um, the big kangaroo pouch on them. Inside the kangaroo pouch, I have, there's two things. There's a hand warming pocket and there's the deeper pocket. I'm probably going to do it in the other way this time where the hand warming pocket will be closer to the body. So you have like kind of two layers and then the deep pocket will be the one towards the front. So in the, this way I did it in the opposite. When I make it again, so it's a learning experience. I'm going to do the hand warming pocket in behind two layers and the deep pocket in the front of the hand warming pockets. The hand warming pocket's only gonna come to maybe at like the crease of where the, the pocket actually starts because this pocket goes all the way down to the bottom, okay? So, you know, here's, this stuff is pretty cheap. It's like 11 bucks, this lightweight canvas that, you know, if whatever you do to it, you're not spending a lot of money. If I, if I get out of this a pattern that, I can use more than once it's going to be worth the 10 bucks and if I get something that I can use on multiple occasions that'll be great so as it is I've already started cutting into the wool I just had a basic pattern again I've I've made one in the past right here I have um, you know originally I probably used that to help me pattern it <coughs> although that's more of like a waste length pullover where the anoraks are like below your bottom so i found one of the things to be aware of is how big is the hole for your neck really and my son's a big guy like i said um this because this is going to be cut here to flap open you know, you you really just you know if this is like 17 or 18 inches that's that's probably plenty for him maybe an 18 inch opening. 
um, well, what it'll, it'll end up. So this is going to, so here I have a, you know, like two ply of the wool I've already cut into a basic dimension. Then I'm going to get the final dimension because this is going to be the vest. And this is going to be the top here. Okay, so, you know, sort of, it's going to start to look like something like that. Um, and then, the, you know, the sleeves come off the sides. The kangaroo pouch goes here. You know, you, you fold over and you stitch the bottoms. You, you know, so what it's really going to come down to ultimately is one of the hardest things I found to do on the first ones that I made was the collar and the, the hood. So my plan on this one is to get basically the hood and the collar mounted to this and then this is going to get sewn to the vest and reason being when you're using a sewing machine the the throat area and i'll show you when we get to the sewing machine is the area between the needle and the housing so you only have so much area to push material through with a standard even a little bit larger machine if you're not using a commercial machine you're going to be limited on how much material can actually pass through where you need it to when you're sewing. So I'm trying to be mindful this time of the order in which I put the pieces together to economize on the amount of material that I have so that it's easier for me to sew the pieces together into a garment when I'm done. So I think that's one of the biggest learnings I had from the first one. When you're, you know, you're putting on, and actually this, this one is the second one that I made. So here I have, you know, the hood, and then I, I think I had already had a lot of this put together, and then you're trying to stitch all this stuff together here. And I was using a tiny little brother machine, and the throat area is really small. So the first thing I'm gonna do is make the hood. I'm going to attach the hood to this piece here. I'm going to make the other things, like the kangaroo pouch and whatever. Then this will get mounted to this, which will be essentially a vest at the point that it's added. And I think I'm going to two-ply the shoulder. Um, I could economize on fabric by attaching this to this here and having it be a single. But I think I would like to actually have it be double over the shoulders, and it'll be a warmer garment. Um, you know, this wool is pretty thick. It's a wool blanket, but it's not... You know, some of these guys will do anoraks and like, oh my God, you can take it down at, you know, whatever temperature. And, and I, I, I don't know, without something substantial underneath it, what you don't have in a wool blanket like this is loft. You have a nice protective outerwear, you know, like an outer cover, but you don't have enough insulative loft to make this a warmer garment. Like this is lined. And this, with the Berber fleece here, even though, you know, poly, blend, whatever, this is fully lined. And it, it feels pretty heavy. And this lining just gives another place where air can be trapped between the outer and the inner layer. And I think it makes it warmer than this one. I did, in another video, the first jacket that I made, the first anorak, whatever you want to call it, is double. I actually consumed an old overcoat and I lined the other anorak with an old overcoat. And it's warmer than this one. And this is maybe down to 45 degrees if you just have a nice flannel underneath it. Um, but if you really want to be warmer, you know, you can just buy a down, uh, you know, down vest to wear underneath it. And that nylon will make it easier to pull the anorak on and off. So anyways, that's where we're at. I'm just in the design phase. Once I get these patterns to the point where I'm happy with them turning into, you know, the, the hood I have to do now, but I have the basics done. And I, that's a pretty big blanket I still have left. So really all I have to do is the hood and sleeves and the kangaroo pouch and you know, it comes together quick. It's not a lot of stuff. But the hardest thing to do on some of these is when you start doing detail work. And the layout in this one was harder because I decided to 
use the pattern that was in the blanket on the pullover. And then I matched it up at the bottom, I matched it up here at the top, and then I also did a bit on the sleeve. So this one I, I put together in a different way. I kind of tacoed the blanket and where this one is going to go together and be seamed at the top of the shoulder, this will also have this other thing over the top of it. Where this one doesn't have any top of the shoulder seam, I folded the blanket over and I tacoed it and then I added the sleeves after as you can see it, right? And I was worried that maybe this thick thing would, would be uncomfortable, but it's not. So I have another video on this one. I don't have to spend a tremendous amount of time there. I just want to take you through the process where you start with something, another pullover, a sweatshirt, get your basic dimension. Know that the idea of these is to go down below your butt so that you have you know more protection from the wind. And it's like an overcoat length almost. It's not quite, but it's almost an overcoat length. And uh, the, the hardest thing about these is getting them on and off. But we'll we'll go through it. You know, you, there are, you know, things you could do. You could, um, you know, maybe at a certain point, you know, you have it with a closure of some kind. You can use buttons. You can use Velcro. You can use zippers. Whatever you want to do so that you can relieve some of the tension down at the bottom to make it easier to take on and off. We'll see. I'll see how this goes. If my son can get in and out of it easily, I won't bother doing that. But if he can't, then I may actually look to um, make it a little easier for the big guy to get in and out of his jacket. That's where we're at. The next thing is I'm, gonna, I'm going to make a pattern for the hood, and then we'll start working on the hood. And then tomorrow I'm going to start sewing. I'll show you my sewing machine. I have a couple different machines. Again, I'm not sure which I'm going to use. I have a couple of vintage Singer machines, um, which are very cool, and you could pick up in relatively inexpensively. And I'll have another video, or there are other videos online where it can show you, if you get a vintage machine, how to oil it up and grease it up and get it ready for operation. If they've been sitting for a while, they're going to need that. But that's another you know, story for another day. This story now is get the hood ready, get the top kind of cowl ready, um, and then work on the vest, get that ready, get the sleeves made up. And the last things I'll end up doing is like the, the end of the sleeve where I decide how I'm going to close it.